worthwhile. They, they were very, there was a, a mutual respect between the two. And, you know, you think B, St Steve Eyes on such a pedestal, head and shoulders above, you know, just about 99% of the guitarists out there. And, and you don't really see Vandenberg up to that level, but he said, you know, that, and, and, and rightfully so. Um, in Vivian's case with Phil Collins, Phil Collins over in, not Phil Collins, yes. Phil Collins, Def Leppard, he says the same thing, that it's, you know, there's such a mutual respect, you know, Phil Collins not being known as the guitar player's guitar player, um, but Vivian, yes. Um, Vivian says that Phil is actually, you know, quite accomplished as well. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, who plays the right thing for the right, for the for the music. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. You know, I think Phil's the great guitar player for Def Leppard or Adrian's a great guitar player for White Snake. Yeah, and you know the thing with with Phil Collin is he kind of gets the the same uh, you know knock as um, the Edge from U two, which is a right. lot of effects driven. And okay, I'm going to plug it into this. I'm going to create a new sound or whatever it is. It doesn't make it any less innovative, and it doesn't mean that their fundamentals and their basic skills aren't really really strong. It's just they've learned a way to hone their craft using the technology that's available to them. Um, you know, there's some stuff that, that Phil Collin does that I, I think he's somewhat underrated as a guitar player because, you know, the other guy in the band before Vivian, Steve Clark, was very much a, a feel player. And he had that more of a bluesy vibe. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it was that juxtaposition that I think was, was so um, attractive for many people. And Vivian Campbell was taken over the bluesy side, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think it was a it was a nice, uh, a nice little mix. So, you know, Justin, yeah. we, we were just talking about, you know, Whitesnake and, and the drummers, right? So yeah. are, you, are you ready to play a game? Uh, yeah, this should be fun. Okay. All right. So I had mentioned that I was going to have a segment called Musical Highlander. Now, I wanted to have some kick-ass bagpipes playing right now, um, but I got to work on my triggers because otherwise you'd hear that and it's like, oh, <laughs> Connor McLeod, it's time. So because it is March Madness, we're doing it as the, the Highlander – uh, single, el uh, single elimination tournament. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now, Tommy Aldridge has yes. a first round buy. He has a first round buy. So white snake drummers, and there were many of them. There can be only one Ian Pace, Ian Pace or Chris Frazier. Oh, Chris Frazier right now, is, I'm all about him right now. All right. He, move, he moves on. He moves on in the rankings. What, what do you have to say about Chris Frazier? Uh, wait, hold on a second. My, the Wi-Fi is getting a little funky here. Sure. Uh, Chris Frazier right now is my, 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 my guy right now. And just because the band, you know, as I told you, we just had band practice tonight. We're learning a bunch of foreigner tunes. Now, Chris Frazier's played with everybody from Steve Vai to foreigner all over across the board. But right now, he's being... You know, the, the, the version of feels like the first time is the version, Chris Frazier's version. So right now he's he's at the top of my list right now. In fact, again, if my wife was here right now, she would tell you it's nothing but foreigner. You should hear me around the house. That's all I'm doing is singing foreigner tunes. So Chris that's Frazier. awesome because we'll, 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 we're going to I'm going to take a note here, foreigner, because I'd mentioned foreigner this last week. And I'm just uh, we'll get back to that. All right. So in the next bracket, we have yeah. Brian Tishy. Yep. Ansley Dunbar. Well, the history with Ainsley Dunbar going to Mother's Invention to the you know, across you know he he's he's like the uh, he's he's a chameleon. I mean, he plays everything and he does everything really well. But if I have to say, right now, I, Brian Tishy is is a true um, Renaissance guy. You know, not only does he play drums, amazing. He's like the best Jason or basic best John Bonham um guy out there man you know he plays the four piece kit and if you go if you google him and then you type in john bonham grooves you're going to see some really cool brian tishy stuff and he shows like the five like really cool and he breaks it down so right now i i'm i'm not as much as into him as much as chris Fager. but tishy's also another i think a former uh foreigner guy yeah, I think so. And and for anyone who who, who doesn't know, uh, it's it's T I C H Y, and he does some yeah. stuff on like drumio, and like he is so patient and very clear. And to Justin's point, it's a really it's a it's a pretty simplistic kit. You know, I was expecting you no know, multiple rack toms and, and all that. No, it's really stripped down, and his feet are nuts. Did like, you did you see the the drumio where I, he does the five bottom grooves? I didn't watch the the bottom grooves. I watched one where he was just doing a whole session on triplets and, and just going off. 
Um, See, now that's the, so that's what I like Tishy a lot because when he starts those triplet fills, he starts with his left hand, and it's, it's so unorthodox for a right-handed person or right-handed drummer to start these triplet fills with their right hand, and he does it with his left, and it's when he gets it going, it's almost like a, like almost like a windmill that he's kind of doing. It's r- really, really good, really good. All right, so he moves on. He moves yeah. on. So I'm really curious about this next one. All right, sure, bro. Cozy Powell. Okay. Versus Denny Carmasi. Cozy Powell, without question. Uh, Denny Carmasi, you know, had obviously this great time with her. Never really intricate, never, but, you know, right on the money, always in the pocket. Um, then he did the, the overdubs for, for Here I Go Again for White Snake later on. But Cozy Powell, I mean, when Co- – and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> we had to learn um, Kill the King. I don't know if you know that it's, it's an old, uh, um, I believe it was Rainbow. Yeah, Rainbow tune. Um, I heard the, the Adrenaline Mob version of it. And I had to go back and research where where the, the original drum line of this and Cozy Powell was on fire. And you don't really hear him like let loose, you know, especially on some of the Black Sabbath stuff where you think he would let loose. He didn't. He doesn't let loose. Interesting. On this one, he does. And it was awesome. So Cozy Powell. All right. So, now we're in the, what is it, the semifinals? Okay. Okay. Tommy Aldridge versus Chris Frazier. Oh, Tommy Aldridge. Question, no question about it. Tommy <laughs> Aldridge, no, no, no question about it. <laughs> All right, and in the other bracket, Brian Tishy versus Cozy Powell. Oh, Cozy Powell. Cozy, I, I love Brian, but no, Cozy Powell. So, I think I know where this is going, just because I've known you as long as I have, and I've heard this Tommy name. Aldridge. Tommy Aldridge is your winner, everyone. Musical Highlander. There can be only one. It is Tommy Aldridge. Tommy Aldridge. Tommy Aldridge. There's a fill that he does. And this is going back um, to Speak of the Devil. When uh, when Ozzy did Speak of the Devil after Randy died and Brad Gills came in. And um, there's a fill he does in The Wizard. I don't know if you remember The Wizard. It's the one with the harmonica. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's a fill he does in there that to this day, you know, we because we played it a couple a couple gigs ago. We played the wizard, and you know, Lee Singer has the harmonica, the whole nine yards. And here I am, I'm saying to myself, Am I going to do the fill? Am I going to try it? Am I going to try it? And I can never get it right. That's, you know, here I am, 47 years old. I still look at that that record. And I'm like, How in the world does he do this fill? It's it's it's. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of group, uh, weird grouping in sex tuplets, but I don't know what it is. And and he still does, you know, uh, uh, what are they called? Workshops and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, oh, yeah. what is he? Like he's, he's in his 70s. 70, 71. And he's 71. he'll like still like rip off the shirt and just start like killing it. And he looks like, you know, we yeah. used to joke about you looking like animal, right? And, <laughs> and he is. And, and the hands are going, the feet are going. And it's like unbelievable that he just has this engine that just won't quit. And that was always right. like the, the whole, when you have someone who can hold it down like that and he could for, you know, a two hour show easily. Forever, yeah. yeah. It's really, really amazing. But you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned Brad Gillis. So this is something that I clearly remember. And I think that you are probably, uh, uh, you know, my aunt Diana, I think, yeah. I think you know her. Sure. I think it is like sure. you and, and her. So uh, she, she's 64 to the early part of, uh, of, of Gen X. She loved, Night Ranger, but I remember clearly you loving Night Ranger. Yeah. So yeah, no. was there something in particular about them? Because I, you know, it was one of those weird things. They're, they're, you know, the ballad band, right? So it's like Sister Christian, but they have a lot of really rocking tunes. So I couldn't even yeah. tell you who the drummer is. Kelly Keegi. Kelly Keegi. As soon as you say the yeah. name, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah. So like, what drew you to like those those kind of bands? Because like that whole early '80s rock scene. You know, you mentioned Journey, you mentioned Foreigner, uh, but you also had like the Ario Speedwagons, the you know the Night Rangers, all those kind of things. Um, you think Night Ranger gets a little lost in the mix as far as like they they were really more. Um, you think about some of the stuff they did later, you know, Jack Blades, this damn Yankees with you know Nugent and Tommy Shaw and all that. Um, but they were really the the precursor to some of the the hair bands, right? I would think so. You know, I think with uh, with Night Ranger. You had Jeff Watson, who was doing the eight finger tapping, um, you know, and that, that was early on in the early 80s. And I think obviously Eddie had the, the the spotlight, but, you know, he was doing some pretty amazing things that, with that. And but I think the, the the problem for them was 
as soon as Sister Christian came out so early on, I think there was a problem with the uh, the record company that said we want another Sister Christian. So then they had a, I think for was it was it Seven Wishes the the record where they put out um, Goodbye, mm. and I think Goodbye was you know their you know their their answer to the record company's ballad, and then it seems like the they they shied away from the heavy stuff. I mean, I mean, like sing me away or some like you know um, the song night ranger. I mean, some of those early early rock and tunes are just awesome. And I, I don't think they ever got back to that. I mean, they became very keyboard for, uh, happy. Um, and I think when they got a little success, they uh, a secret of my success. Let's talk about that. When oh yeah 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 yeah. It, they did the uh, the soundtrack to that or that song on the soundtrack that. You know, it's almost like they got pigeonholed that, you know, you know, it's cookie cutter. I hate to say it, but, you know, it's it's it, it almost became cookie cutter, I guess you can say. So I think they got lost in the mix. I, I'll agree with you. Definitely. You know, so there's a great book. I don't know if you've read it. It's called Nothing But a Good Time. Uh, it's nothing but a good time. It's about the, you know, uh, Sunset Strip. Um, but it's the uncensored history of the 80s rock explosion uh, by gentlemen uh, Tom Bujor, uh, Rich Beinstock, and Corey Taylor did the foreword for it. Um but I found so interesting as I started reading it is the number of times that Night Ranger kind of came came up, you know, particularly as musicians and how all the guys that were in these other bands that, you know, later became the huge bands all recognized them as being one of their contemporaries. And like this dude got called to Brad Gills got called to play with Ozzy like yeah. he can go like he can play. But they kind of got like you said, they get pigeonholed and then they become a, you know, a footnote in history, which is really kind of unfortunate. Um, so I think I'm going to go and. We're done here tonight. I'm going to go listen to some Night Ranger. Yeah, you know, we, we do a couple of Night Ranger tunes, and or, you know, we, at least we started a few of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think with Night Ranger, I think, um, so the precursor to Night Ranger was a band called Rubicon. And Rubicon was the, the L.A. band that I think everybody wanted to be part of. I, this is like predates Doc and predates Motley Crue. Mm. And I think Rubicon was, I think that was Kelly and Jack, I think, from Night Ranger's band. And I think that was the band that everybody wanted to be part of. So they were already labeled as a musician's band. Um, so they were, people were watching them. I mean, there's no doubt about it. People were watching. And I think the fact that you had um, Jack Blades, who can really, I mean, what a great singer he is. Absolutely. And then you have Kelly Kiki, who, who's just as well a front, a front man as well as a great drummer. So, yeah. you know, you, you have two guitar players who both can play lead very very successfully you have two singers who can very successfully lead the you know front man the the, the show i mean where do you ever see that what, you know you don't see that i mean that's so uncommon to have that so i think night ranger was really in a in a group of their own not a band that i love but the only one that i can think of because you 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 have your drummer coming front and center is obviously the eagles but that's a completely different genre of rock but that's really the only one that had multiple credible front men and and players well there's a few there's there's phil collins of course that, yes that's true. Know, from genesis um <clears throat> but in that case that's it that could be a little different because um <clears throat> yeah let me get a sip of water <clears throat> i mean that was their live acts were engineered to have two drummers you know, for the for him to be up in front, you know, whereas in Kelly Kigi's case, I mean, here he is. He just, you know, turns to the to the left and he's singing while he's playing. And that's that's there's a guy from Connecticut. If you ever get a chance, look him up. His name's Josh Dion. He is amazing. He'll play piano with one hand. He'll play drums with the other and then he'll sing. And he's his own band. I mean, he's out of Yukon. I mean, he's in a band called Paris Monster. <clears throat> but right now I think he's solo and he's backing um, John Schofield on guitar. Um, but he's just amazing. Talk about a guy, a singing drummer. I mean, there, there's a lot of them. I mean, Dean, Dean Castanova from Journey, um, Nick DiVirgilio, Spock's Beard, who also played with Genesis. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of really big names. But you mentioned, of course, Don Henley. He's probably, probably the most famous of all. Or John, um, um, LeVon Helm from the band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Gosh, I yeah. forget about them sometime. Uh, Bob Dylan's, uh, you know, backing band becomes legendary on their own. Right, right, right. I mean, you could say Ringo. I guess you can say Ringo. But, I mean, 
what you do in the studio and what you do live are two different things, I guess. 